Today, I have the great pleasure of interviewing Raheem Suleiman, the CEO of Neo Performance Materials. Uh, good morning, uh, Raheem. Good morning, Jack. It's very nice to see you again today. Uh, Raheem, I, I've been thinking about your uh, progress, and, and I have to tell you one little historical note. 18 years ago, I met your immediate predecessor. He and I were both speaking uh, at a conference in Toronto. And I asked him, how come you're not in the mining business? And his answer was, why, would I, why should I take the risk of the price volatility of rare earths when I, when I can simply be a, a process provider? And, and I thought to myself, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Now, in, in, in listening to some of the things you've been saying the last few days, especially yesterday, I think you probably agree with that, that proposal. And I was going to start today by, by asking you, gee, why are, why are you not in the mining business? But I think I've answered my own question. Why would you be? Okay. And, and I want to point out, if, before I ask any questions, that there are only two rare earth companies outside of China and Japan. There are only two actual producers, in my opinion. One is Linus, and the other one is Neo Performance. And the interesting thing is what they have in common is that they're both profitable, which is the only metric I've ever worried about my entire long business life. So I congratulate, congratulate you on that. Your, your uh, earnings call yesterday was fascinating. I, I didn't know the, about the progress you've made. And uh, can, can you describe what do you think about the American market? Because I know you're you're in the European market, and I understand that. Okay, and the European market is very in much in need of 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 Neil. Uh, you have at this point no competition in Europe, but you may have some in the near future from for a French group. But what do you think about entering the American market for uh, rare earth permanent magnets? of the type that might, might be used in like OEM automotive. Well, thanks, Jack. And I, I, I appreciate that introduction. And certainly, you know, to, to start on the, the mining part, I certainly agree with the sentiment. Um, look, there's there's a couple of mining, rare earth mining companies in the world that are incredibly valuable in Linus and MP. So they've, they've made good businesses. Both of them have been on a, a really long journey to become the businesses that they are, have poured billions of dollars into the ground uh, and continue to be well positioned going forward. Um, but Neo is a little bit different. We've always focused on the midstream and the downstream. We are profitable today. We are cash flow generated today. We have a fairly small uh, sustaining capex budget today. So we're just a different business, uh, I would say, than the mining company. And and our focus would be on wanting to continue to grow our value add portion of our business. So we think those are those are good businesses. They're just different businesses than our business model being you know value add focusing on our customers. Um, taking price volatility out of the equation, and therefore we're, we're consistently EBITDA positive. So regardless of where rare earth prices are, whether you believe rare earth prices are high or low, it doesn't really matter to Neo per se, because we're going to pass rare earths on through, to, to our end customers and just focus on very focused execution on our, our pass-through arrangements and value-add process. Um, in terms of you know our, our plans to come to the U.S. or what's what's been happening in the U.S., obviously the U.S. has been a, a great leader in in, in their agreement with MP Materials in really addressing this concern that the world has of 93% of magnets are made in China. Um, and I think that uh, the world has really woken up to this issue when China put some export restrictions in place on uh, heavy rarers and on permanent magnets and the US reacted and, and they react in a, in a very decisive and strong way um, with, with their agreement with MP Materials. So we're open to coming to the U.S. We have a, a history. Obviously, we have the longest operating history of being able to separate rare earths and be able to make magnets for rare earths. But we're also very comfortable with the with the trajectory that we're on in Europe. Um, a lot of people understand uh, the size of the U.S. market and actually end market to end market. It's, it's about the same size as Europe. But what it's important to understand is one level beneath because the, the end market is not necessarily the end consumer. In our universe, the end market is where the motor is manufactured. 
And in that universe, um, the Europe is two and a half times bigger than the US in terms of market size of who actually manufactures motors. Of mm -hmm. course, the largest markets remain in China and in Southeast Asia. Um, but you know, outside of that, Europe becomes the next largest market. So we are extremely well positioned in Europe. We're we you know we did receive government grants uh, to build our facility in Europe. We we got all of our permits in Europe. We did it in record time, uh, and we see a very very supportive customer base uh, in Europe. So we're happy with that. We're going to continue with our plans to expand in Europe. But certainly, you know, with with the U.S. government, with the power of the U.S. government and the influence that they have. We're, we're in dialogues and, and we're happy to come to the U.S. in the right set of circumstances. But frankly, we can't get into the details of any of those types of dialogues um, and interest uh, in, that, in that front. So we'll speak specifically to the projects that are that we are working on publicly, which is kind of phase one of our of our European centered magnet business and eventually phase two or one B. And then we've talked about wanting to do three or more phases elsewhere in the world. Uh, uh, next uh, point. You you mentioned that you have heavy separation and refining in uh, your Estonian operation. I, is that functional? Is that operational? So we have, to, I would say, two different aspects to the heavy rare earth capability that we have. First is we have, we've long owned for, for 25, 30 years, a heavy rare earth separator in China. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that folks now understand there are technology restrictions on transferring export, uh, transferring technology outside of China. And Neo, by all means, obeys all of the laws and regulations of the company of the countries that we operate. So we cannot export heavy rare technology um, out of China. However, we've been operating it for 25, 30 years. We have customers that have required uh, heavy rares and more particularly specialized heavy rares. We have a lab that's been focusing on on further developments in heavy rares, making nano products, nano DY products that go into semiconductors and they go into MLCCs and a number of different applications. So um, we are very, very close to the, to the universe of heavy rares, and we understand the process very well. And then you stitch that onto the fact that we are already a light rare separator, and we've been doing that for 30 years as well. So recently, we have uh, built out a mini production line, uh, whether you call it a pilot line or a mini production line, uh, we're in the process of building that line out in Europe as well. So it'll be stitched onto our, our larger light rare separation line um, and we're doing it. This is not a lab scale line. Um, this is this is a line that is capable of, of, of real production and production that will end up uh, in magnets and end up in vehicles. Um, but it's a small line still, uh, and it'll be delivered by the end of this year. Uh, and then with that in time, we will then develop, a, you know, a line that is an integrated line between our heavy rares and our light rares capability uh, as sourcing of heavy rares become more available. So we're frankly, just in an excellent position to decide when is the right thing to do, and we have the experience to know how to do it. You know, if what you're saying is correct, that you'll, you're, you're, you're heavy where, let's say, demonstration plan, I'll give you, that's mid between pilot and commercial, uh, will be operational at the end of this year, you will be the first company to have done that in the history of the Western world. Okay, there is no such thing as heavy wear of separation today in the Western world on a commercial level. So, uh, again, uh, I, I, it's hard for me to keep up with your announcements. And I, I very much appreciate, uh, you keep talking about all the technologies which you have and which you've operated for ge more than one generation. Okay, and I think that everybody needs to understand that everyone else except Neil stopped doing this a generation ago. That's the problem here. We don't have any institutional memory. We don't have legacy engineering. Only you have that, okay? And I also congratulate you for doing what I could, what I label the right thing. In other words, you have the right size operation at the right time in the right market. And and most of your there are you actually have no competitors at this point in the Western world none, and, and so the the fact is that you're so far ahead of them, and your plans look pretty good to me. And and my opinion is that although the U.S. and European markets are similar in size for rare earth permanent magnets, 
the the issue is the type of where permanent magnets and also i keep telling i'm in detroit as you know i keep telling people car companies don't buy magnets what are they going to do with them put them on refrigerator doors what do they need them for they buy rare permanent magnet motors and the largest American domestic american producer buys theirs from a light from a canadian company that's licensed by a korean company however Having in my own life been so uh, done quite a bit of marketing in Germany, I know that what you said is interestingly uh, correct, that the, the Germans make a hell of a lot of rare permanent magnet motors. They need more, more of these specialized magnets than any American manufacturer at this point. So I, I don't know where to, where to stop, Raheem. I really don't. I, I, I am six months ago, I wasn't aware of any of this. And I just have to tell you one thing. A colleague of mine, a friend of mine, visited your facility in Estonia. And he's rather skeptical, okay? And he phoned me and he said, "I, it's unbelievable. He said, these guys have just made the first modern facility in the West. He says, he, said, he was gushing. I said, slow down, you're, you're going to have a heart attack. He goes, stop. But, but the point is, uh, I plan to visit your plant next month on your opening, and I, I very much look forward to seeing things that I didn't believe were possible six months ago. So congratulations. Well, thank you, Jack, and obviously we're, we're, we're looking forward to, to hosting you. And and I think, like, look, all, all the things you said there are, are, are absolutely right. But, I, I mean, Neil's disposition is we'd really like to see um, more folks in the world continue to develop their operations as well. We certainly are benefiting um, from from the the increased awareness of this issue, and the issue is real. So we're talking about awareness. Neil's been talking about it for a long time, but but in some circumstances, there's only been a, a small group of us that have talked about this. And and I, I I think that the temperature started rising and awareness started increasing three four three four five years ago. I mean, we can talk about strategic and critical materials on global um, charts for for decades. But I think we started really see government action in the last couple of years. And then I think most recently, the U.S. government action is strongest. But I think the, the world ecosystem is building. I mean, Linus is a, is a incredibly successful separator, miner and separator of rare earths. And they are also beginning uh, their journey on heavy rare earths. They have separated some in their facility. MP materials will continue on their journey to separate more and more and more. Um, and then eventually also add heavy separation to that. And we think that's great. Um, we really do think that we need more capability. Uh, we just appreciate, you know, that raises the awareness of customers. It gives customers confidence that there's an ecosystem that exists. And then when we get further into it, um, I think customers appreciate uh, the, the difference between Neo's history um, and, and can accept that there's some value to that history in our experience. But the market is enormous and, and we need a strong global ecosystem. I congratulate everyone in the industry for the progress that they have made and I just think Neo is fortunate to have uh, just this this operating history in terms of separation of lights and heavies and magnet making and, and metal making that is just beyond, you know, anyone in, in the Western world outside of, as you said, China and Japan. But we need more. Um, we need everyone in the space to be to be successful and continue to grow uh, because the market is just incredibly large. Um, and if we're going to make this kind of parallel supply chain, and I don't think that talks about divorcing. Uh, from all global sources. I think all global sources have a role to play, um, but I think we need, need better distribution of supply and better distribution of capability. It's a thesis that Neo has long held. It's not something that we've, we've woken up to in six months or one year or five years even. It's a thesis we've long held, and now we're in a position to capitalize on that. The fact that we have a lab um, for separation and magnet making that has been in place for, for 30 years. The fact that we have Magnet capable, rare earth magnetics capability and separation capability that's outside of China for 30 years. This is what will give us the competitive edge as we move forward. Um, but as I said, all you know, all the entrants, established players who are, are producing product, uh, we want them all to be successful. Thank you very much, Raheem. Uh, I, I I very much look forward to to hearing about the progress, or as you would say, progress of of your company. And uh, I wish you great success. I don't think 
I don't think you need my wishes. I think you're on the way. Thank you. Although we always appreciate them, Jack, and we've always appreciated your support. And, you know, you take a step back and you talk about, you know, we've talked about what we're doing in, in Europe in this, in this magnet business. And it's just, it's a history. It's a long history. It's a history mm -hmm. of a company that's profitable, um, you know, which, as you said, is is rare, um, to, to use the term rare in a rare earth industry, but it's rare to be profitable. But long-term profitability, long-term cash generation capability, uh, a good capital structure, we, we pay dividends to our shareholders. So uh, I think we're in a great position um, mm -hmm. in a market that is just exploding. But I thank you for your support all over, over the years.